Hey beer fans, this is Beer Native TV. I'm Steve Jaguer, and in this very special video, I'm going to be talking about what makes beer great. Of course, in order to do that, I really need to talk about what makes hops great. Because hops are kind of the predominant aroma and flavor that are associated with different beers that you try. And given your choice or the way you move towards certain beers, it might be governed by which hops are used to make those beers. Now, if you know a little bit more about hops, then you can make better decisions. Now, if you're brewing your own beer, even more important that you understand the anatomy of hops and the different elements that you can learn about those hops that'll affect the eventual flavor, right? Okay, so if we're gonna talk about hops, really, for me, the core element that makes my decisions a lot easier is the alpha acid content associated with the hop. Alpha acids are largely what are considered a bittering agent but they have other things associated with it. They're not just that. They also have a bacteriostatic effect, which can be an antibacterial. So this goes way back to the, the origins of the IPA, where beers were being brewed in the UK for journeys to India. They needed to survive, so they had a lot of hops and they had a lot of booze in them. So that actually, that tradition has not been left behind in the modern craft IPA revolution. But the variations within which we are creating IPAs has exploded. And it's largely to do to the different hops that are now available. If you look at hops like Simcoe or Citra, that, and let's say Chinook as well, they have, an, they have an alpha acid content and you can find these online, say, look at the hops list, put it up there, which is between 15 and, well, around 15%, 12, 15, 16, which is pretty high. If you compare that to your traditional British real ale, we're talking about Saz and we're talking about Goldings and we're talking about Hollertau and those are down within like two to five percent. They're providing a mild hop flavor to let the malt flavor really rise in those particular um, traditional British beers. So depending on which one you want to, what you want to do and what flavors you want to find, you choose different hops. But it doesn't just end there. If we're talking about breaking down the alpha acids specifically, there is the home alone. And I'm going to put that spelling up on the screen because it sounds like I said home alone, like that movie from the, from the 80s. Ah! And the co-home alone. Home alone. Home alone. Yeah. The home alone has its own percentage. And so if you're talking about a high home alone content alpha acid, then we're going to be getting flavors that are considered soft bitters. And if we want soft bitters, well, that's great. That's when we're talking about, say, things like Simcoe. And if we want things that are a little bit harsher on the bitter, then you would be talking about hops like Chinook. Both have a similar alpha acid content, but the breakdown of those is slightly different. So you're going to want to look in the percentage of one versus the other. I personally really like slightly harsh bitter beers. So I really enjoy when I see Chinook on the label, although I do love it as well when I see the Simcoe's the let's even go into Centennials um, and of course Cascade. Cascade is an interesting hop that it kind of sits right in the middle. It's more of a, let's say five to 8% alpha acid. So it can spice up a nicely malted real ale or it can kind of level off an IPA. So it's very interesting in, in the way that works. So I highly recommend diving into alpha acids. If you really want to get really experimental you can start talking about some of the really new hops, like you talk about a Simcoe Cryo. Simcoe Cryo is where they've kind of isolated the lupulin gland, which is where the part of the hop where all the resins and oils live. So that's kind of the heart of the alpha acids. And I'm, I try one of those, I tried one of those from Camden Brewery, which was I think called Off Menu IPA. And you could tell, you could tell the difference when you open the can. So just as a demonstration, I'm going to show you an, a, an interesting beer that I have not tried yet. It's going to be one, part of my next review. And that is the Camden Show Off. And I'll just put it up to the screen so you can get a look at it. What's unique about this is really the fact that it's using a lot of the modern IPA hops. It breaks it down to the different stages. I love Camden for doing that. It breaks it into Kettle Whirlpool and Dry Hops. There's only a slight difference in that they're using Magnum and the Kettle. Mostly it's all Chinook, Simcoe, and Mosaic throughout which is gonna provide a nice blend of both home alone and co-home alone. So I'm gonna get a really big, rounded, super juicy flavor, right? And this is the kind of thing you would typically see in an IPA. However, what's the catch? It's a lager. And the, the malts used here are Pils, Carapils, Munich, and Wheat. 
So that is going to be fascinating. We've taken a bit of a hybrid traditional lager malt and we mixed it with the what would we what we would expect from a modern IPA. And it's it's going to be good. So that's that's my test. It's a what is it a 5. Point, oh boy, 5.8. So that's going to be exciting. So catch that later on in another one of my videos. I'll try and link to it up in one of the cards. But hopefully that was a bit more education about hop, how hops work and which ones you choose. And if you do see them written on the can, hey, you've always got your phone there. Take a look, look at those hops and see if those are ones that are going to really kind of strike a balance with the kind of flavors you really want from a beer. And if you do what I do, I look it up before I try and beer, try and taste the beer and see how accurate I think the flavor is. And that's what really feeds into the accuracy rating that I look at when I'm doing reviews. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned a little bit more about hops and what makes beer great. I'm Steve Jaguer. This has been a Beer Native video. If you know of any weird beers like this that mix strange malt and hop combinations that are unusual to you and you'd like to see me crack one and have a review on the show, please leave a message down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. That's all for now. Thanks.